Hey guys and welcome back. It uh, is the next day. I figured we'll start getting some work done. Uh, talk to the owner. He's going to look into getting gas tank straps, a flywheel, and a uh, rear main seal. So that stuff can work out. Let's think about this gas tank. I have a feeling what was done was this is a tank for a carbureted and they try to make it for fuel injected and I believe that is going to be homemade because I would figure that that would have two bosses similar and uh, be roughly probably in the same location whereas if you looked at the other video they actually hacked a hole in the floor for I think it was this one to come through I forget which one came through the hacked in hole but um, so we're probably going to stay with that as long as it, it seems like it fits the location correctly. It's just the, you know, the boogering uh, of this stuff. But uh, that's why it was so hard to get out of there too, is because of uh, how that was done. So uh, we'll see what we get for material there. Also, I asked them to look for, if they have like little felt pads or something that it's supposed to be sitting on to uh, go and grab them also. So we'll wait on that, and I think today, I, I was thinking about doing the exhaust, but I'm like, eh, why don't we jump on some of the welding? So we are going to go and get set up, get some lighting under there for you guys and all, and uh, we're going to do the battery tray, and then on the other side of this, there is a mouse nest, I think it's in this location right here, that uh, we've got to go hammer away, get that crap out of there, and then dig in so that we can start cleaning it up and making patches. I just got back from the welding store because I knew I was gonna need some more welding gas. The one tank is almost empty, so I filled up my reserve. And while I was there, did a little shopping for my welding helmet. Welding helmet is probably about four years old. It's an auto darkening Miller. I am very happy with it, performance. It, uh, has all the modes and everything on the back of it. You use it for grinding. It, it it'll you know depends on you know what mode uh, what you're doing with it. If you're welding, cutting, or grinding, it'll it'll dim it to different levels. But if you notice that uh, that guy is pretty scratched. As I'm getting older, my eyeballs are uh, getting scratched internally too. I guess so. I went and got some uh, replacement components for it, and it's going to be external shield the uh an internal shield which one was it this is the internal shield and then they make magnifying glasses just like you wear regular glasses uh, for helping you to read close up and then they come in different levels and I, i'm going to go with a 1.5 so i'm going to go load up the helmet with those and see how they uh, improve my viewing capacity so i just pop the front out you just push the two buttons on the side of the helmet and then that can come right off i'm not quite sure how that comes out of there. Let me just figure it's something like that. Looks like we gotta transfer that seal over. First time I'm ever changing that too, so it's about due. I believe I changed the inside one. I think it came, I think the helmet came with a new one. I wonder how many people have left this on and uh, said the new lenses are worse than the old one. Yeah. So you get more and more fingerprints and crap already on it. Drag it across the counter. It's a problem when you're working on old rusty cars. It's good if you're working on a bench, it's, they stay pretty good. I was like, didn't that thing come with a, a sock to put it in? I'm like, yeah. That's not where the damage happens. <laughs> Underneath the rusty car like we're going to work on now. You guys really want to see this? Just want to see the aftermath? How about that? Let's go. 
take a little bit of time and clean that before I put it on there. Actually, I want to clean that too. That looks like it's got a little bit of a from under shamanga happening. And out with the old. Those are the two old ones. Oh, that was pretty bad. Tab bit of welding splatter. Of course, the more I tried cleaning the new one up, I was starting to put scratches in that. So uh, I was even using the like a camera shammy looking thing. So uh, it was very sensitive to the fingertip. Uh, we got a new one on the back of that. And then the magnifying glass has its own little holder built into it and it kind of slides in from the top. Not sure if you have to pull the face out to do that, but that just pops right out. That's no big deal. So that's going to pop in from the front and then uh, that goes back over it. And that will give her a whirl. You guys look big. I like the magnifying glass. What do you think? See pretty good from there? Like a little backlight on you. I figure we'll go and uh, get a little beat down. We'll see how far it goes and where we need to uh, replace from. You guys ever watch Pisser's, Pisser's channel? Say it smells like mouse piss, but I'm gonna say we're probably gonna let's do a preliminary cut. Something like let's go with we'll start with that and we'll see what kind of meat we got left behind. And we'll probably just take this one right to this line right here. See if there's anything on this corner. It may blow out on the bottom too. Still have over here to do, but uh, I figure we'll start with that and see how we like it. Probably might take an air gun and blow some of this crap out of here, and I might come back with a plasma cutter to do that, or I might come back with a whiz wheel. I'm not sure yet. Got to contemplate. Let's see if we can dig some of the nest out of there first before I try setting all that on fire. Unfortunately, mice can get into like a quarter inch hole. So easy. And then they, the problem with mice is they don't have bladder, so wherever they go, they pee constantly. And that pee is very acidic, it just kind of rots metal out. So that's what has killed this. Plus the fact that the nest itself holds moisture, it just never dries out. See if we come across a carcass. It's stuck higher up. This is a disease that mice carry. Some virus. I don't think it's prevalent in our area. Still gonna try not eat this stuff. on coming. Yeah, plasma cutting that might not be a good idea. <laughs> Grab it. The glorious job of auto restoration. In our area, any car that you got that's been sitting for more than a year or two, unfortunately, just gets inundated with mice. And it doesn't matter if they're in a garage or outside. It seems like they all come down with the same issue. I think we got enough out of the way so that we can kind of do a little chop chopping. Get in there. For those who do not like dental tools, you're using a whiz wheel. I warn you now, you don't like it. 
Come back in two minutes. The top felt good. You can kind of tell when you're cutting with the wheel whether you got good metal or not. Oh, that shit's still going there. Well, I'm going to go put a mask on, go get the air gun, blow that out, and put a new wheel on that. Housekeeping! Sir, recording. At some point, I expect the compressor to kick on. So it'll be even more noisy. So we can get that little piece out of there. So let's go and clean us up some edges and see if we can get an edge that's uh, workable. We are going to the other most favorite tool. Let's go make ourselves a little uh, paper doll. We'll lay some paper over it. Make ourselves a little bit of an imprint. pair of scissors and then uh, let's go cut that out now. How's that? So we're gonna go cut that out a hair oversize. This 
see what the end is there. I think I'm still oversized. That looks pretty good. So I am going to make a pattern, a uh, piece of steel about that size. And then we're going to start fitting it to there. In case I forgot to mention, this is uh, going to be a noisy video. This is what we do. I would say let's say my sharpie's not here anymore. I'm gonna go and trace the outer line on here and then come back with a flapper and we're gonna go clean up the material on the back side of it so that we have something nice and clean to weld to. I was thinking about putting it on the inside and welding two nails to it and then pulling forward and tacking it. I think we're going to go it this way just for the. Just because. Now I want to come back wherever that line is. I got to erase that because I need to make sure I have good metal to weld to in those locations. That's where my weld's going to be. More noise.
see if good old Irwin can reach out far enough and grab this. Make sure. That is going to be a painted surface on the back side, so i got to watch what I clamp to. I need to get some pliers. Actually, I want to wrap some tape on the back side here. This is what you're seeing behind the bumper, which is painted. So I'm going to take some uh, masking tape, put it on the back side before I clamp, and probably put some on the pliers too. So I have tape on the back side and then two pliers taped up. And I'm not concerned, like you can see here, it's still floating. I'm not that concerned with trying to get the whole thing clamped down. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little tack and tap. Basically, wherever it's touching right now, I'm going to try to grab a couple of tacks to hold it into place. Once you have those tacks in there, then you can kind of uh, tap next to it and get that area flush and move around. And then the same one comes, like after I get this pushed down, I'll just come over here and push on it with the hammer and uh, get that settled down, get a couple tacks on it and work it around from there. You'll see. Let's go try out the new welding helmet situation. See if I can see any better. The uh, Miller is set at 18 gauge. That's what the thickness of this is. It's probably what the thickness of this was too originally. Get comfy. Where's my hammer? Hit me with my hammer. Make sure the bottom line is right, because that's what's going to stay. All right. Get more tax on it. working our way down. Diving board. Sometimes you go wet against something too that kind of helps. Look at that. Yeah. So look closed. I must say I'm liking a little reading glass uh, setup in the welding helmet does work. Nice being able to see what you're doing.
the edge down there. That's it guys, I'm going to go back and I'm going to go like fill in between these two, then fill in between these two, then fill in between these two and just kind of jump around and uh, suck the whole thing down. This area is not that important, you're never going to see it, the engine's going to be installed here. Um, but you know, for aesthetics, you would want to definitely make sure that you don't just try welding it all the way around or else it'll, it'll start getting kind of lumpy on you. So that should work. Sometimes I like to take an air gun, if it gets too hot, just blow an air gun on it and it helps kind of cool it down right away in between the welds too. So I'll bring you back after we get that all buzzed. Save your eyes a little. Hey, let's see if we can smooth out some of the lumps. I got a, uh, a flapper disc on a four, four inch grinder, four and a half. That's what we're using. What's it, what grid is it? 40. So we can smooth out the road a little bit. So I know a lot of people are going to ask, what about the area, hold on one second, the area behind, so your internal lip is here and your outer lip here, isn't it going to rust right in between here? Um, the whole thing is kind of built that way too, like on this corner where this rail comes to this rail, there's a fold right here and it's just welded the two pieces together. So the factory is actually kind of made the same way, just like up here, same thing, it's all made that same way. Um, I do my best to try to keep the, the rust out of in between there and uh, what I like to do is shoot oil behind after all said and done after you paint this surface out here on the back side I like to spray some oil of sorts and that seems to help it greatly so uh, a lot of guys are like well why don't you butt weld that together this is a stronger weld than butt welding it you just get a, um, a more uh, cohesive patch you know, if you, if you put two things together like this and then weld them, it's still kind of wobbly. If you take and sister it like it is now, and give me a, a double finger, um, one way it'll still kind of want to bend a little bit where the weld isn't, but where the top weld is, it can't go back the other way. It's really hard. Uh, the next best thing to do on that is on this part, you drill a couple of uh, spot holes, say like right here, it was a really critical area. You would drill some holes here 
and plug weld it, and then that will make it so those two pieces literally can't move apart from each other. So, my two cents. And just to repeat ourselves, here's another hole. We're just gonna do the same thing all over again, but let's go tap on her. go straight across. Hopefully I could do a square piece. When I cut back, if I find that that's really thin right there, I'll, I'll kick it up into it. But we're going to try to maintain that line and make a relatively small rectangle. I'm not going to show you this whole one all over again because uh, it's just going to be what we did to the TV. So another um, option, like the other one I, I did from the front side, is to try to run a piece of metal in through the back. And we haven't tried this yet, let's see if we can get it in there. Just to feed it. So, let me set up my recliner here. There we go. On the back side, and you can pull it forward and weld it. Something like, like that. So, this one, we're gonna have to curve the bottom two lips a little to be able to do that. But again, it's kind of the same thing. You pull forward on it, tack it all the way around. This is good if you're doing an external panel that you gotta do fill over, you know, if you're doing body work over it because now the weld, the weld is kind of recessed down inside a cavity. And so when you grind it, then you go to fill your mud over the top of that, it gives you some place to work instead of having to spread your bondo out all the way out to here to try to feather it back into the hole. So, showing it as an option. 